in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. <clears throat> For last 24 or 5 years that I have been immensely uh, <clears throat> busy with dealing with interfaith issues and I have been involved with uh, many interfaith organizations. Uh, I have been also blessed to uh, have known many uh, religious leaders from different faiths, uh, Jewish, Christians, as well as leaders from other faiths as well, such as the Hindus and Buddhists. <clears throat> uh, in fact, this has been a very enriching experience where I get to know many of those leaders. Uh, we share, we shared uh, 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 thoughts, ideas. Uh, we enjoyed uh, meals together. We visited each other uh, uh, at our homes and at our uh, worship places. Uh, for example, on this very particular ta uh, table, I have hosted uh, uh, Archbishop Vigneron, the uh, Archbishop of the uh, Catholic faith in Detroit. So uh, I believe that this is the ultimate uh, experience a religious leader can have in in getting to know other leaders and getting to know their traditions and their uh, spiritual faith. I believe that uh, we should encourage the next generation of religious leaders, whether Muslims or uh, non-Muslims, to follow through to establish this relationship. In fact, I found on those non-Muslim leaders uh, great friends and supporters especially at the time of uh, difficulty and hardship when Muslims were put under immense uh, pressure, uh, whether by media or by certain political forces, uh, I found that those ecumenical religious leaders have uh, come to support Muslims and to show their sympathy with them. So in these, indeed, it is a very blessing and enriching uh, experience. Imam Ali, the successor of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, has a beautiful saying in which he says, Anas a'da'u ma jahilu, people are enemy to that which they do not know. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, blurry ideas, ambiguous ideas about uh, people we don't know and faiths that we have not experienced. Once we get to know others and we get to understand their faith and where they come from, uh, there will be uh, mountains of, of ambiguity that will disappear and we can get closer. Uh, then we realize that there are uh, many commonalities that uh, bring us together. In fact, that the commonalities that exist between Muslims, Christians and Jews uh, outnumber their differences. Uh, the only thing is we, Muslims, Christians, Jews, we need to get together and know one another just to discover and explore those uh, commonalities. I often happen to speak at uh, non-Muslim, predominantly non-Muslim institutions such as churches, synagogues, etc., and uh, there is a, 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 an overwhelming sense uh, that I can feel among people, among the audience, that when I talk about my own faith, I see the parallel uh, I, and I see that the message I talk about resonates in the mind of other people who would come and tell me that, Imam, what you are talking about, when you are talking about your faith, this reminds us of our own faith. This shows how close we are, how intertwined we are, and how we trace our roots to the same, basically, Abrahamic faith that includes Muslims, Christians, and, and Jews. And this shows that uh, the faith that we all follow, uh, it stems from one fountain, and that is the divine fountain. We basically worship the same God uh, through different words, religions and names, but basically we all worship the same entity. That is what the interfaith 
helps to do to make you understand how close you can uh, be to your uh, uh, brother in, in, in humanity. Again, I go to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, the successor of the Prophet, and I cite a, a very uh, inspiring statement given by him in which he says, الناس إما أخو لك في الدين أو نظير لك في الخلق People are either your brothers in faith or your brothers in humanity. Humanity brings us all together. Uh, we all belong, according to the Quran, to one single uh, father and one single mother, to Adam and Eve. And indeed, we are one family. Despite our differences and diversity, we all belong to the same family. One striking lesson that I learned from dealing with leaders of other faiths that all those three monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, they emphasize one very concept, and that is the concept of doing good deed. Wanting good for others, just wanting it for yourself. Uh, respecting one's neighbors and parents and emphasizing those, what I call the universal values that bring us all together. Uh, it is so striking, striking also to know that uh, uh, those three religions uh, would emphasize the, the essence of faith, which is reaching out to others, helping the needy, uh, tending to the poor and the underprivileged, more than they emphasize their own rituals. Uh, in all religions, we pray. We pray to God through certain ways and gestures. But all those faiths believe that our prayers are nothing but an instrument for achieving a higher goal, and that goal is to uh, be more pious, to be more humble, and to be more helping toward other people. So. I believe that is one thing that I learned from other faiths, that uh, the, the essence of all those monotheistic religion, religions focus on the uh, fact that helping others, being good to others, extending the hand of help and support to the needy and to the underprivileged uh, is the most striking lesson that each uh, religion teaches. For example, we Muslims, uh, we fast one month in the year. And the main idea of fasting for one month is to focus the mind on the suffering of the needy and the underprivileged. So we can help, we can ha extend the hand of help. And statistically proven, Muslims tend to be more generous and giving during the month of Ramadan, the month of fasting, than other, any other month. This is by itself a proof that our ritual, our rituals, our uh, certain practices, religious practices, our even prayers are vehicle for achieving a, a, a better uh, and more humanitarian uh, society, a society where we uh, embark on, uh, on greater values by helping the needy and, and caring for those who are desperate for help and need. Every religion uh, has its own uh, uh, particular characteristics. Uh, Muslims pray five times a day uh, toward the Kaaba, the black cube shape building located in, in Mecca. Uh, Jews pray toward Jerusalem. And uh, Christians, they have their own way to pray. Uh, we may use different languages. We may use different names for God. For example, uh, in Arabic, we call God Allah. In Farsi, we call him Khuda. In uh, English, we call him God. In Hebrew, we call him Yahweh. Those are different names, uh, but those different names uh, do not make us different uh, 
in essence. We are all uh, creatures of God. And as our uh, Christian friends say, we are children of God. Well, in Islam, we have an issue with this uh, term uh, of, of the children of God for not giving the uh, impression that God has physical children. But the fact is that uh, our differences have never been a reason for us to hold animosity uh, toward each other. Uh, God created us different. We sometimes think differently. We act differently. We look differently. But that doesn't make us uh, enemy to each other. Uh, in one verse in the Quran, God speaks about the rationale behind this diversity between us. God says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, I have created you from one single male and one single female and I made you into tribes and nations so you may know one another not to fight one another to, so you may know one another so the whole purpose of being different from others is to know the others to learn from them to accumulate a bigger and richer experience in life so I do not see that differences among religions have to be a recipe for animosity or hostility. Actually, uh, those differences should be, in fact, a recipe, an invitation for working on uh, our uh, universal messages and values. And ultimately, these differences that exist among us should drive us to learn from one another and to enrich our human experience. Well, I believe that uh, there have been traditions lately, I, especially in the United States, where I see certain worship places such as uh, churches, synagogues, and even some mosques. Uh, they hold annual uh, gatherings in which they dedicate one day of the year for a, an ecumenical prayer in which all people, people, followers of all different faiths get together and they pray to God, pray for peace, they pray for justice, they pray for unity and a brotherhood. And that is by itself, it's a great phenomena. Uh, uh, the first chapter in the Quran emphasizes the power of prayer. We start our, our prayer with asking God to help us to overcome our uh, uh, shortcomings and weaknesses. So we basically, human beings, we are in desperate need for prayers because basically uh, uh, prayers emphasize the fact that we as a human beings, we are vulnerable and we are in need of the, the omnipotent, which is God. for helping others and for the welfare of others, I think that's a, a message that, that resonates basically in everybody's mind, that our religions, regardless uh, of which, which religion, which particular religion I'm talking about, be it Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and even other religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism, they all encourage their followers to extend the hand of of uh, help uh, in the in the Islamic tradition, we find one hadith, one saying of the Prophet, in which he says, "Khayrukum and fa'kum nas The best of you are those who help people the most. So, my religiosity should not be only displayed through how many. Uh, prayers I do a day, how many times I go to the mosque, rather by how many people I can help every day, how many uh, starving individuals I can feed. When uh, Prophet Muhammad tells us that when Prof Prophet Abraham finished building the Kaaba, uh, the black cube shaped building in Mecca, which is considered the most sacred building in Islam, uh, he he stood on a on an adjacent 
hell overlooking the, the Kaaba. He was looking at the Kaaba with so much with a sense of jubilation and uh, joy uh, for having for have having the chance to build the house of God. Uh, it was then that God sent Angel Jibreel telling uh, Abraham that, look, Abraham, it is good that you built my house, but do you know what is even better than building my house? And Abraham was inquiring with so much as an astonishment on what could be better than building the house of God. And God replied to him, what's better than building my house is feeding a, a, a starving stomach or offering clothing to a naked person. And ever since Abraham decided not to die by himself, rather every time he would be about, he, he was about to dine, he would invite strangers to his house and dine with them. It is a tradition that is now pursued by the follower of the Abrahamic faith, Muslims, Christians, Jews, who always pride themselves on hosting strangers and offering food to them as part of their, their religious uh, practices. So I believe the, these are some of the lessons we, the followers of those different monotheistic faiths can, can emphasize by focusing on a unified goal. And that is to, for example, fight poverty. In, uh, in the world uh, by having uh, cooperation among the followers of the religious faiths. There are at least uh, 2 billion Catholics, 1.6 billion Muslims around the world. Uh, Muslims and Catholics alone can form over 50% of the uh, world's population. Imagine if if 50% of the world population can cooperate, can work together in order to advance a, a noble cause such as fighting poverty, I think we can achieve a lot.